Good morning, I'm Sister Charlene Winston, and I'm coming to you today with this week's Sunday School Bible Study. And our Sunday School Bible Study for this week is the sign of Emmanuel. The sign of Emmanuel. And as we move into our winter quarter, uh, of course we know we're, getting, we're coming up on Christmas time, the birth of Christ, and so we are moving closer and closer to it. So we are uh, speaking of the prophecies that come about uh, uh, about our Lord and Savior. Amen. I would like to thank each of you uh, for joining me today that as we get together once again through the grace of God that we uh, learn, that we grow, that we strengthen each other in our thoughts and our words, uh, that we help each other by by uh, relating to each other uh, things that is a blessing that will help strengthen each other as we learn the word of the Lord, that as we be become doers of his word and not hearers only. I would act, I'd like to ask that if any of you have anything that is something that is said that touches your spirit, your heart, or your soul, or if you have any questions, uh, make a comment below at the bottom. And I also would like to ask if you would subscribe to my channel. And so we will uh, get ready and we'll have a prayer and then we'll get started with our lesson. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We come before you this day, Jesus, asking that you lead us and guide us in your true path of righteousness. We first, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, those seen and unseen, Lord. We thank you for everything that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in our life, for watching over us and bringing us through this week without... Uh, bringing us through this week, uh, through all or any of the trials and tribulations that we have had, that we have made it through, that we have, we are overcomers. We ask, Lord Jesus, we uh, for deliverance of any that need deliverance at this time, for protection from anything that is going on that is against uh, anyone, that the devil be bound, and that there is no... Uh, 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 him uh, having a foothold and taking over in our life that we uh, uh, put him under our feet and we continue to walk in the will and the way of the Lord that all our circumstances is uh, following Jesus all our life uh, the way we carry ourselves shows that we are a child of God we would like to thank you Lord Jesus for everything that you have done you is doing and you shall do we also <clears throat> want to ask you Lord that you would if you would open our eyes that we may see our ears that we may hear and give us wisdom knowledge and understanding from on high that we may receive of your word that we may get an understanding of your word, that we may be uh, better Christians, better people that walk in the walk of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Amen. This is, uh, we're getting ready to get started. Our, our lesson for today, as we say, is the sign of Emmanuel. The sign of Emmanuel is coming from Isaiah 7, verses 1 through 4, and verses 7 through 16. Amen. The scripture lesson text read, And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Razan, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son, the son of Remlah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Sarah is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood, are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and the Shur Ahabab, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool and the highway of the fullest field. And say unto him, Take heed, and be quiet, fear not, neither be frightened, for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of reason, and Saria, and of the son of Rimla. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Saria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is reason. And within threescore and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. 
and the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remlah's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask the sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depths or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, the, and he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, as it is a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. But butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. And for before the child shall know to refuse the evil, the choice, the choice, and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson as we began uh, as our winter quarter, speaking of the sign of Emmanuel coming, uh, of his coming uh, unto the earth, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Uh, as uh, the first four verses is Ahaz as he reigns in Judea. It's that Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord like David his father and this is uh, in 2nd Chronicles uh, chapters uh, uh, chapter 28 verse 1 through 4 speaking about the king Ahaz who we are talking about in this lesson it said for he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel he made also molten images of Balaam moreover he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel he sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Amen. This is just giving us an idea of why uh, Ahaz has called upon him, um, upon the people and on himself, all these trials and tribulations that is going on because Ahaz is a... Uh, uh, doing things that is not of the Lord. He is uh, worshiping the idol God. He is burning his children uh, for the idol gods. And he does not want to change. Uh, in the first verse of Isaiah 7 and 1, it says, In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judea, Razan, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Rimlah, the king of Israel came up to Jerusalem to wage war against it, but could not yet mount an attack against it, or could not prevail against it. I mean, that this uh, verse here is speaking of, uh, is telling us first that uh, Ahaz was king of Judea, and at, at this time uh, Israel had been had had separated, and they were known as two uh, two different tribes, the North and the South tribe, which meant they were against each other in many areas. Um, but uh, uh, South uh, Israel, uh, Judah, uh, Ahaz was over South Israel, and risen king of Seir and Pekah, king of North Israel. These two kings went up uh, uh, to war against Jerusalem, but they did not prevail. They were, they were not successful in taking them completely down. They did have uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, they did have a lot of destruction. They did have a lot of people that were killed. They did have those that were taken away captive, but they did not uh, overthrow the, the kingdom in entirety as they had wanted. They had wanted to get rid of Ahaz as king of Judah, but they were not successful in this. It says, uh, the second verse says, when the house of David was told, Sarir in, in, was in league 
with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. Now, as, uh, as we would know, whenever trials and tribulation come up, we do become afraid. We do uh, 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 wonder which way to go and get uh, frightful. Uh, and said there are many things that uh, that calculated to fill us that can cause fear, such as suffering can cause fear, loss can cause fear, temptation and death, especially alarming uh, are combinations of evil that is coming upon us. When they threaten, we are, t are apt to feel as did Ahaz and his people in Isaiah 72. Affliction seldom, seldom comes singly. Sickness brings on poverty because if you're sick, you're not able to work and to carry on to do as you're supposed to do, to keep yourself up and to keep things going. And said, poverty in its train, and the heart is apt to fail before such accumulation of misfortune. We have to keep our hands in the Lord's hand because we know that when all these things come upon us, uh, uh, sickness that, that can bring poverty or, or afflictions and all these things, that if we are not prayed in the Lord, that we will fall upon all these uh, different uh, problems that comes upon us and the, and the word tells us that each of us whether uh, in God's hand or not will have problems it rains on the just as well as the unjust so everyone will have problems but in itself and in its entirety we are to be different in the fact that we are overcomers through the Lord amen the third through the ninth verse says, uh, And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and Sheir Shabab, a, uh, which uh, this is uh, Isaiah's son, and his son names uh, meant Remnant shall return. Remnant shall return. And as we know that, uh, uh, as I was speaking on, uh, and when they uh, attacked Ahaz and the kingdom, they did take people away. But this was giving them a uh, encouragement uh, with uh, Isaiah bringing his son, uh, what this name mean, and that uh, it meant that uh, even though many will be taken away, uh, some will return. A man said, "Your son at the end of the conduit." It said. Uh, uh, go go out to meet Ahaz, you and Sher Habam, your son, at the end of the conduit and of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field. I never could find out exactly what the purpose of or the exact meaning of uh, the Lord sending them to that particular area, but this is where uh, he would find Ahaz at that time. And so uh, him and his son went up, uh, and as he went up to speak to Ahaz and say to him, Be careful, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these two smoldering stumps of, of firebreds at the fierce anger of Risen and Syrah and the son of Remlon. And man, he's telling them, uh, uh, telling Ahaz, uh, the Lord is speaking to Ahaz through Isaiah, and he's telling them uh, to be strong, to hold up, as we know that God has uh, many uh, 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 of his people, and know at the time that he knew that they would be fearful that they will be scared they will be weak that he tells them he gives them encouragement to let them know that he is with them that he is their protection that for them to be strong that and to fear not that they will be overcomers amen it said thus says the lord god as as you as we know that as uh uh when he said, when God speaks, then it, we listen. When God speaks, there is no reason for us to fear. We must be strong in his word, in his name. And the only way we become strong in his name and in his word is as we study his word and and, and begin to walk out the, the things of our life through faith. And as we walk out our life through faith, then we become stronger in our faith. And that way we can be overcomers in, in situations when the Lord tell us to be strong. It said, for the head of Sayer is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is risen, and within the three within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that is to that it be not a people. Now the two the uh people that is attacking uh uh 
Ahaz and his people are uh, God is telling them that within 65 years uh, they would be destroyed themselves that they were not as strong as they felt they were but they would themselves be uh, be destroyed and saying the head of Ephraim is Samir and the head of Samir is Rimla son if you will not believe surely you shall not be established the the main thing uh the biggest thing is 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 the god is telling uh ahaz that you must have faith you must believe you must stand on his word you must believe because if you do not believe you will not stand you will not be established amen and the uh, 10th verse through the 14th it says again the lord spoke to ahaz Ask a sign, ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Shoel, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will come, shall conceive and bear a son, and call his name Emmanuel. Amen. As we look back at the tenth verse, it says, uh, uh, the Lord spoke to uh, uh, through Isaiah again and said, Speak to him again. Tell him, say, Ahaz, and say, Ask the sign. Get, let, let me show you who I am. Let me show you that I am God Almighty and that there's nothing too high or nothing too low that I cannot do that will uh, not bring you through uh, this situation and I can prove it to you, show you who I am. Uh, just ask the sign. But Ahaz not willing to give up his life, his ways of doing things, not willing to walk in God's path. He wanted to stay in the way he uses as a, as a statement saying that he would not tempt the Lord his God. But he was not caring really whether he tempted the Lord his God because he didn't uh, uh, really have faith in the Lord his, the, the Lord God because if he did he wouldn't be uh, 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 worshiping idol gods and he wouldn't be uh, offering his children up, up to, to be burnt as a sacrifice. Amen. Uh, Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord my God. It was hypocritical. It was a hypocritical phase. He did not fear to tempt the Lord his God. He did not believe him. He feared lest the God of his fathers should do him some injury. O house of David, said Isaiah, is it not enough for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? This is Isaiah speaking. You, 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 uh, God is trying to help you. He's trying to show you, and you still is, 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 is pulling against. You're, you're not believing. You're not even trying. He said, do you think you can change his purpose because you are insidious and heartless? Do you think you can change what God is going to do because you don't care? He said, no, the Lord Lord himself shall give you a sign, and it would be a virgin conceived and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. As, as Ahaz refused to ask for a sign, the Lord would give one of his own choosing a sign that a sign the a, and a sign the range of which would extend to circumstances far beyond those of the time of Ahaz, and would bring us com cumulation the prophecies and the promises relating to the house of David, that David house would always have someone on the throne, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ahaz and, and men of that sort would have no share in the blessing and glories, glories of the fulfillment of the sign because of their, his waywardness, his uh, non-care, and his wanting to remain in his way, wanting to remain in the way that he was. Let us be mindful of this. Let us change. Let us turn as the Lord come to us and we're, through the Holy Spirit, uh, giving us a uh, uh, inkling to change and, and desires to, to do something different. Let us walk in that path. Let us do that which is right. Amen. He said he shall eat curds and honey when he, he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For, for before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. Before this come to pass that those two kings that he dreaded would be uh destroyed they would no longer be amen 
Uh, the commentary said ungodly men are often punished by others as bad as themselves. Being in great distress and confusion, the Jews gave up all for loss. They had made God their enemy and knew not how to make him their friend. The prophet must teach them to despise their enemies in faith and dependence on God. Ahaz, in fear, called them two powerful princes. God scorns the scorners and gives his word that the attempt should not succeed. Man purpose, but God disposes. It was folly for those to be trying to ruin their neighbors who were themselves near to ruin. Isaiah must urge the Jews to rely on the assurance given them. Faith is absolutely necessary to quiet and compose the mind during trials and tribulations. Amen. And as we see here, uh, uh, as uh, I said, God scorns and he gives his word that uh, that the attempt should not succeed and it was not just to uh, King Ahaz but it was to the people as well and even though King Ahaz did not accept it the, some, of, some of the people did accept it some of the people did uh, believe and, and move into uh, 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 knowing that God was going to protect them and guide them and lead them in their in their situation and that they would come through and as uh, Isaiah brought to his son uh, with him that meant a uh, remnant share return that there would be some that would make it through there would be some that lived through and would return that meant that some would not uh, some, all would not be destroyed all would not die it would be some that made it through amen they said secret disaffection to God is often disguised with the color of respect to him and those who are resolved that they will not trust God, yet pretend they will not tempt him. The prophet reproved Ahaz and his court for the little value they had for divine revelation. Nothing is more grievous to God than distrust, but the unbelief of men a man shall not make the promise of God of no effect. The Lord himself shall give a sign. How great soever your distress and danger of you the Messiah is to, be, is to be born and you cannot be destroyed while that blessing is in you. It shall be brought to pass in a glorious manner and the strongest consolation in time of trouble are derived from Christ. Our relation to him, our interest in him, and our expectations of him and from him. If we believe, if we have faith, if we trust and don't doubt in him, that he will, it will come to pass. He said he would grow up like other children by the use of the diet of those countries, but he would, unlike other children, uniformly refuse the evil and choose the good. At that time, they had said that they would not uh, 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 be able to plant and grow, but they would be living off of things that grew automatically, uh, a return growth uh, from it. I mean, it's a, as if it, you know, if the seed from it dropped and it left anything that whatever was left, it grew again the next time that year. Then so whatever regrew, that was what they was living off of during that time when, um, the prophecy was coming uh, into fruition, which he was still uh, many centuries down the road. And said, and although his birth would be by the power of the Holy Ghost, yet he should not be fed with angels' food. Then follows a sign of the speedy destruction of the princes. Now a terror to Judah, and said that, that their destruction was uh, of uh, the two princes that was going to to destroy them. Was the, uh, was the sign that said before this child so it may be read this child which I have now in my arms Sheshabab the prophet's own son Isaiah 7 3 shall be th three or four years old these enemy fo forces shall be forsaken of both their kings amen and they were speaking here of that Isaiah's son was a small baby and that before that child became uh, of age then 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 
be before that child became of age that those two kings that he dreaded that he uh, uh, was willing to burn his children for that he was willing to give up all for uh, uh, that they would be destroyed themselves but all he had to do was have faith is faith the prophecy is so solemn the sign is so marked as given by God himself after Ahaz rejected the offer that it must have raised hopes far beyond what the present occasion suggested and if the prospect of the coming of the divine savior was a never failing support to the hopes of ancient believers what cause have we to be thankful that the word was made flesh amen we know that the word was made flesh and as we know the word was made flesh our words is flush and if we speak the wrong words of our own lives then we call destruction we cause uh, downfall but if we speak uh, uh, uplifting if we speak blessing if we speak I am strong I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me and walk in it and continue to see it until you believe it then you shall the word will be made flush in your life it said may we trust in and love him God our Savior and and copy his example amen that we uh, remain in faith remain in love remain in in, in, in in hope that the time is coming as it did come as our Jesus as our Savior Jesus Christ came and died for our sins that we may walk with the Holy Spirit within us that we may remain strong and be blessings to all those we come in contact with amen Isaiah is, is known for being a very difficult uh, chapter to uh, 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 to to get a, a grip on, but it, in this instant, it speaks of the prophecy of Christ coming. It speaks of uh, uh, Isaiah's son at at that time. Uh, uh, a, a now prophecy of uh, of what would happen before the child was was of any age. Uh, it speaks of prophecy of now and prophecies that would happen in many centuries down the road. Amen. So uh, as we uh, studied these prophecies and these uh, lessons of Isaiah, let us uh, pray and ask the Lord to open our eyes that we see and our ears that we hear and give us wisdom and understanding. And I, I, I guarantee you that he shall do that because when I first began with this lesson, it was very difficult for me to get a grip on or understand. Uh, other than the, the, the little verse that said that Christ was coming, the rest of it I did not understand. But as I read over it again and began to use uh, the, 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 the Bible commentary on it, which says, uh, which carries you to the different chapters in the Bible that uh, talks about uh, what is happening, uh, that adds to what you're reading and what you're studying, then it, it became clearer and clearer and God opened my eyes that I see, that I was able to see and he gave me wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word. So continue to pray to God for understanding. Continue to pray to him for wisdom and knowledge and he shall open your eyes and study the word, study the word and as you grow in his word, then you grow in your life. Amen. I pray that uh, uh, before we close out our lesson, I would like to ask if there's anyone here that has not been uh, saved and filled with the precious Holy Ghost uh, of the Lord, that they come to him and just say the prayer that I do claim Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I do believe that he died on the cross for me and that he is my Lord and Savior. Claim him as your Lord and Savior and you shall be saved. It doesn't say you might be saved. It says you shall be saved. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord and Savior and you will be saved. And I pray that you did this and that as you did this, you will begin to study your word. You begin to read your word and ask God for wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word and he shall give it to you. He shall open your understanding standing to his word. Amen. And I pray that you have a wonderful and blessed week. I'll see you all next week. God bless you.